I share my Mac Mini M1 setup with you today. Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's That One Camera Guy, back at it again with another video for you. Like many of you that might be watching this, uh, the Mac M1 chips have piqued your interest and you might be in the market for a Mac Mini, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, or just interested in it in general. I was part of that camp of folks. And as soon as I heard about the M1 chips, I placed a pre-order for the M1 Mac Mini and got it, uh, I think on launch day, surprisingly, because I didn't, I was late to the pre-order. So, but I still got it on launch day and I've been using it since then, since no late November. And I've really, really liked it. Really great experience. There's just some hiccups with apps compatibility. Um, some things don't work as well, but it's getting there. It's getting there. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and show you my desk setup and all the different components that I have with me. The goal of this video is not to tell you to get this stuff. It's more like, hey, this is what I'm using and that's what I'm using for right now. There's obviously gonna be links in the description if you wanna check out some of the products. Some are affiliated, some are not. And that's pretty much it. Obviously, you can give me some recommendations down below or help me out if I have a question in the video <laughs> in case I don't have a solution for it. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's a wide shot of my desk setup and everything like that. Keyboard, trackpad, monitor, camera, secondary iPad as a monitor, audio stuff, Mac mini is somewhere there. And then I got my mic down over here, headphones. And then below here, I've got external storage. These are some uh, Terra Master drives and stuff. I'll talk about that in a second here. But let's go ahead and first start off with the monitor. I typically had dual monitor set up, but I wanted to just go with just one monitor. I had uh, a BenQ as a secondary monitor before with my Windows set up. And I said, you know what? I'm just gonna stick with one. Only because it just, the Mac setup is just so seamless and I'm able to use it and it works really well. So I just wanted to go ahead and stick with just one monitor setup there. And let's jump over here to everything else that's going on on the side here. I got a Rode Pod mic with a pop filter or a filter, just so it doesn't do explosive pops. And I've got that plugged into this Motu M2 audio interface device. Originally, it didn't have full Mac M1 compatibility support, but for some reason, starting yesterday, everything started to work correctly. I can actually see audio meters, but I think it was more, I might have plugged it into the wrong port on the Mac Mini or something, but anyway, it's working really great now and I use that to, I have my headphones plugged in here. So I've got these uh, Sony MDR7506 headphones, I've had them for a long time. I just change the pads out whenever it wears out, but these just last forever. So you just want, <laughs> want audio monitoring headphones that are just somewhat decent, that are pretty good. Yeah, I just get those. Uh, let's see, Mackie audio monitors or something like that, whatever they are. I got those two of them about 120 bucks when I got them. They're not super fancy or anything like that. And then uh, jumping over here, let's jump to the actual Mac mini itself. I have it set up in portrait or <laughs> portrait or <laughs> vertical orientation there. And I've got uh, this dock right here. This dock, obviously I'll have a link below, but this one has a two and a half inch drive cage inside of it. So what I did was I put in a four terabyte SSD that I bought used some time ago and it just wires in through USB-C, AK Thunderbolt 3 in this case. So it has two USB-A's, two USB-3's, uh, SD card slot and micro SD, which is pretty handy. All right, next on my list is this uh, CalDigit dock. You've seen these before. It's a bit more pricey than this dock right here, but this one, I would say if you're a power user, I would go with this, UHS-2 audio ports, USB-C, USB-A. It has four more USB-A's on the back it has a USB-C, a Thunderbolt 3, and then it has Ethernet and DisplayPort on the back of this device. So it's really pack heavy with all kinds of additional features. Um, and it's just one port that plugs straight into the Mac uh, Mini. Now, if you were using a laptop, like a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, I think this makes a lot of sense because it does power your MacBook Air M1 or MacBook Pro F1, which is really handy. Next thing here is my Stream Deck. I started using this uh, with when I started doing distance learning, distance teaching, and it's become really handy, especially with combo with OBS Studio. So I highly recommend you check one of these out, maybe watch some videos to learn more about it, but I can automate certain things. So I have it used for OBS, but then I also automate it for certain things at my job. Like I can click on a button, it'll take me to a specific class. So I have like, I teach five, I have five classes. I can jump to my Google Classroom or I can jump to my attendance rosters. I can run a Google form, a Google slide, whatever. I can kind of automate it for what I needed to do. Obviously, you don't need a device like this to do that, to accomplish that feature. It's not necessary, 
but it just makes it a little bit easier. But I have the bigger one at work because I just do a bunch of stuff on it. So, but yeah, I have the larger one at work, but definitely check one of these things out. All right, I have some external storage here. This is from Pluggable. This has an M.2 that I installed inside. I'm not getting the full speeds, obviously, and this device is USB-C based. Uh, like, I think it's 10 gigabits, something like that. So you're not gonna get like the 2000 megabytes per second read and write speeds or something like that. But I get about 700, I think, or so read and write when I plug in via Thunderbolt into the Mac mini or this device here, which is fine. I've got this, um, I bought these, what is this? I have these uh, these short extension cables that I use in case I need to reach back here. So I have this cheap HDMI video capture card. I use this to capture footage from, um, from a, a Chromebook because when I do, because students are using like Chromebooks and I use this to create tutorials. So I just plug in the Chromebook to this and then I screen record in through the Mac using this. So I'll plug in via HDMI with the Chromebook to that. Uh, got some more external storage plugged in here if I need it. And then I got a cam link plugged in as well. And again, it's, I'm using these little extension, these short USB 3 extension cables to make life easier. So I've got this cam link and this cam link is going into this A7R4. I, I sometimes just use like a, an APS-C, like an A6400, but I'm not using it right now. So I have it using it as my webcam there. And then I have OBS Studio running here. I'm not using it obviously but I'm using a secondary iPad as my secondary screen through Sidecar, which is pretty cool. I need your help though, if you've been using OBS Studio. I can't record smoothly at 1080p. I just can't. Uh, I tried Ecamm Live, Ecamm Live works well, but for some reason I can't get this to, uh, I just can't get OBS Studio to record smoothly at 1080p. 4K is a mess, it can't even handle 4K. So that's a different story, but let me know your experience with that. I would really appreciate it if you have any experience with that. Let's jump into keyboard situation here. I got the wireless Apple keyboard and then trackpad and then a Logitech mouse. Right off the bat, this has Bluetooth issues and it still does, it stutters. I can't find my wireless unifying receiver. I think I did, but it still wouldn't work. So I don't know, maybe I'm just losing my mind here, but it works fine enough, but it does stutter. And then the trackpad, you know, I, I had to get this because I wanted that, that experience of using this, swiping and everything like that, the gestures. I just, I really just appreciate the gesturings using this and I've gotten comfortable using this. And then again, the keyboard. Now, in terms of Bluetooth issues, during the first week or so with the Mac mini, when I got these two, I had Bluetooth connectivity issues, but that was, I don't know why, but I was running Plex, ser Plex media server off of the Mac mini. And whenever I would watch a movie through the Plex, it would disconnect my keyboard and my mouse or the trackpad. Eventually it all stopped after a week or so. So I don't know, it kind of solved itself and I'm on Big Sur 11.1 .1 and I haven't had any other issues since then. So I wanted to just point that out for some of you that are wondering about it. And I'll just keep a lightning cable nearby in case I need to plug it in really quickly if it gets disconnected, but it just hasn't had any major issues since then. So I just want to mention that. Also on my desk is a Thunderbolt 3 cable and that Thunderbolt 3 cable leads me down over here to my external storage. So these are Terramaster D5s, there's five bays on those. And obviously I don't keep them on, I just use them when I need to get data off of it. Uh, I got a Drobo here, and then I got this Blu-ray burner drive here as well. And then I got a Windows laptop up here, which can access these files. Right now these Terramaster drives do not work natively with the Mac M1 chips but apparently they're gonna release firmware and some sort of software to make sure these can actually operate and run. That way I can use this and not have to worry about using the Windows system. And Drobo, <laughs> Drobo, you guys are taking way too long. Drobo has no support for, I think, Big Sur, or Mac M1, sorry, I think. So I, I have no idea. Drobo, I don't know. They gotta get their stuff together. So that is my Mac mini M1 setup. Let me know your thoughts about it. If you have other suggestions or things like that. I know there's an OWC dock that adds additional Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is pretty cool. Um, but I don't know, hopefully it was helpful to some of you. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Again, links will be in the description. If you gotta check it out. If you found the video helpful, make sure you drop a like, get subscribed, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.